You are more than you think you are right now. In this moment. You have the power to change everything. The way you see yourself shapes your entire life. It's time to take control of that vision. Every choice you have made, every goal you have reached or missed, every relationship you have built or lost, it all starts with how you see yourself. Your self-image is the foundation of your life. And here's the amazing thing. You can change it. You might be wondering, how do I do that? Let me tell you a little secret. Your self-image isn't set in stone. It's not something you're born with. It's something you create day by day, thought by thought. And if you created it, you can change it. I know what some of you are thinking, but I have tried to change before. It didn't work. Here's the thing. Change isn't always easy. It takes time. It takes effort. But most importantly, it takes belief. You have to believe that change is possible. Have you ever watched a caterpillar turn into a butterfly? It's an incredible process. The caterpillar doesn't just grow wings. It completely breaks down inside its cocoon and rebuilds itself. That's what real change looks like. It's not always pretty. It's not always comfortable. But the result is beautiful. You are that caterpillar. You have the potential to transform yourself completely. But first, you need to see yourself as that butterfly. You need to look beyond what you are now and see what you could be. Now, I'm not talking about some feel good, positive thinking nonsense. I'm talking about real. Lasting change, the kind of change that starts in your mind and spreads to every part of your life. Think about the greatest achievements in human history. The pyramids. The moon landing. The internet, they all started as ideas. Someone had to see them in their mind before they could make them real. Your life is no different. You have to see the change in your mind before you can make it real. Seeing yourself differently isn't enough. You have to act on that vision. You have to live it out every day. It's like learning to play an instrument. You can't just imagine yourself playing. You have to pick up that instrument and practice. Day after day. So how do you start? It begins with your thoughts. Pay attention to how you talk to yourself. Are you your own biggest critic? Do you focus on your flaws and ignore your strengths? It's time to change that inner dialogue. Start by catching those negative thoughts. When you hear that voice in your head saying, you can't do this or you're not good enough, stop it in its tracks. Replace it with something positive. I can learn to do this. Or I am improving every day. Now, I'm not saying you should lie to yourself. This isn't about pretending you're perfect. It's about recognizing your potential. It's about seeing the best in yourself, even when you're not at your best. You wouldn't expect a seed to grow into a beautiful flower overnight. You plant it, water it, give it sunlight. You take care of it day after day after day. That's how you need to treat your self-image. Nurture it. Feed it with positive thoughts and actions. Give it time to grow. But remember, thoughts alone aren't enough. You need to back them up with action. If you want to see yourself as confident, act confident. Stand tall. Look people in the eyes. Speak up for yourself. It might feel uncomfortable at first. But that's okay. Growth is often uncomfortable. Let me tell you a story. There was once a young man who stuttered badly. He was shy and avoided speaking in public. But he had a dream of becoming a great orator. Everyone told him it was impossible. But he refused to accept that. He practiced speaking with pebbles in his mouth. He recited verses while running. He trained his voice to be heard over the roar of the ocean. That man was Demosthenes, who became one of the greatest orators in ancient Greece. I'm not saying you need to put pebbles in your mouth. But what can you learn from Demosthenes? He didn't let his current reality define his future. He saw himself as a great speaker. And he worked tirelessly to make that vision a reality. You have that same power. You can decide right now to change the way you see yourself. And once you do that, you'll be amazed at how the world around you starts to change. But be real. 
this isn't going to be easy. You're going to face obstacles. There will be days when you doubt yourself. Days when it feels like you're not making any progress. That's normal. Change isn't a straight line. It's a winding road with ups and downs. The key is to keep going. Remember, every step forward, no matter how small, is progress. Celebrate those small victories. Did you speak up in a meeting when you usually stay quiet? That's a win. Did you try something new? Even though you were scared? That's a win. These small steps add up over time. Fear is one of the biggest obstacles to changing how you see yourself. Fear of failure. Fear of success. Fear of what others might think. These fears can paralyze you if you let them. It's often just false evidence appearing real. Most of the things we fear never actually happen. And even if they do, we're usually stronger than we think we are. So how do you overcome fear? You face it head on. You acknowledge it. But you don't let it control you. You say to yourself, yes, I'm afraid. But I'm going to do this anyway, that's courage. And every time you act with courage, you're reinforcing a new, stronger self-image. A time when you did something you were afraid to do. How did you feel afterward? Proud. Right? Accomplished. That's the feeling you want to chase. That's the feeling that will help you change the way you see yourself. Many of us let our past define our future, we think. I have always been this way. So I'll always be this way, but that's a lie. Your past doesn't have to determine your future. You're not a tree, rooted in one spot. You're a human being with the power to change and grow. Your past experiences have shaped you. Yes, but they don't define you. You can learn from your past without being limited by it. In fact, your past struggles can become your greatest strengths. Every challenge you have overcome. Every mistake you have learned from these are all part of your unique story. They make you who you are. You get to decide what your story means. You get to interpret your past in a way that empowers you. Not limits you. Did you fail at something? That doesn't make you a failure. It makes you someone who had the courage to try. Did you face a difficult situation? That doesn't make you a victim. It makes you a survivor. Change the narrative. Instead of saying, I have always been shy say. I'm learning to be more outgoing instead of I'm not good at math say. I'm improving my math skills every day. These small changes in how you talk about yourself can make a big difference in how you see yourself. The people you spend time with. The books you read. The media you consume. All of these influence how you see yourself. Are you surrounding yourself with people who lift you up or bring you down? Are you feeding your mind with positive? Empowering information. Or negative. Limiting beliefs. You have heard the saying. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. There's a lot of truth to that. If you want to change how you see yourself, surround yourself with people who see the best in you. People who challenge you to grow. People who believe in you. Even when you don't believe in yourself. And it's not just about people. What are you reading? What are you watching? What are you listening to? Fill your mind with stories of people who have overcome obstacles. Learn from those who have achieved what you want to achieve. Feed your mind with positive, empowering messages. But remember, this isn't about ignoring reality or pretending everything is perfect. It's about choosing to focus on what empowers you. It's about interpreting your experiences in a way that helps you grow. Setting and achieving goals is one of the most powerful ways to change how you see yourself. When you set a goal and achieve it, you prove to yourself that you're capable of change. You build confidence. You create evidence that supports your new self-image. They need to be challenging enough to stretch you, but not so difficult that they overwhelm you. Start with small, achievable goals. As you achieve them, set bigger ones. Each success builds on the last. Creating a positive cycle of growth and achievement. And when you're setting goals, Make sure they're aligned with your values. Don't set goals based on what others expect of you. Set goals that excite you. That make you want to jump out of bed in the morning. 
when your goals align with your values, you're more likely to pursue them with passion and persistence. Many of us avoid trying new things because we're afraid of failing. But failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. Every successful person has failed many times. The difference is, they didn't let those failures define them. When you fail, don't say, I'm a failure, say. That attempt didn't work. What can I learn from this treat? Every failure as a learning opportunity. See this feedback, not a final judgment on your abilities. Remember, failure is an event, not a person. You are not your failures. You are not your successes either. You are a human being with infinite potential for growth and change. Your comfort zone is a nice place, but nothing grows there. If you want to change how you see yourself, you need to step out of your comfort zone regularly. Do things that scare you a little. Take on challenges that stretch you. Every time you step out of your comfort zone, you're expanding your sense of what's possible. You're showing yourself that you're capable of more than you thought. And that's how you change your self-image. But remember, it's not about taking huge, terrifying leaps. It's about taking small steps consistently. Maybe it's speaking up in a meeting when you usually stay quiet. Maybe it's trying a new hobby. Maybe it's having a difficult conversation you have been avoiding. Whatever it is, do something every day that challenges your current self-image. Gratitude might seem unrelated to changing how you see yourself, but it's actually a powerful tool. When you practice gratitude, you train your mind to focus on the positive. You start to see opportunities instead of obstacles. You recognize your strengths instead of dwelling on your weaknesses. Try this. Every day, write down three things you're grateful for about yourself. Maybe it's your sense of humor. Maybe it's your perseverance. Maybe it's your kindness. Whatever it is, acknowledge it and appreciate it. This simple practice can dramatically shift how you see yourself over time. Your physical state has a huge impact on your mental state. If you want to change how you see yourself, take care of your body. Exercise regularly. Eat nutritious food. Get enough sleep. When you feel good physically, it's easier to feel good mentally. And it's not just about health. Pay attention to your posture, your facial expressions, even the clothes you wear. Stand tall, smile more, dress in a way that makes you feel confident. These small physical changes can have a big impact on how you feel about yourself. One of the most powerful ways to change how you see yourself is to help others. When you contribute to something bigger than yourself, you prove to yourself that you have value. You see that you can make a difference in the world. Find ways to use your unique talents and skills to help others. Volunteer. Mentor someone. Support a cause you believe in. When you see the positive impact you can have on others, it changes how you see yourself. Helping others doesn't just change how you see yourself. It changes how others see you too. People are drawn to those who contribute. They respect and admire those who make a difference. So by helping others, you're not only improving your self-image, you're improving your image in the eyes of others too. Many of us carry around guilt and shame from past mistakes. We beat ourselves up for things we've done or things we failed to do. But holding on to these negative feelings doesn't serve you. It only holds you back. Learn to forgive yourself, acknowledge your mistakes, learn from them and then let them go. You are not your past actions, you are who you choose to be right now. In this moment, and while we're on the topic of forgiveness, learn to forgive others too. Holding on to anger and resentment only hurts you. It keeps you stuck in the past. When you forgive, you free yourself to focus on the present and the future. The way you talk to yourself has a huge impact on how you see yourself. Pay attention to your inner dialogue. Is it mostly positive or negative? Do you encourage yourself or criticize yourself? Start treating yourself like you would treat a good friend. Be kind to yourself. Encourage yourself. Celebrate your successes, no matter how small. When you make a mistake, don't berate yourself instead. Say something like, that's okay. I'm learning and growing. And here's a powerful technique. Use I am statements. 
I am confident, I am capable, I am worthy, even if you don't fully believe these statements at first. Saying them regularly can help rewire your brain. You're planting seeds of a new self-image. Athletes use this technique all the time. They visualize themselves performing perfectly before they even step onto the field. You can use the same technique to change how you see yourself. Spend a few minutes each day visualizing yourself as the person you want to be. See yourself confident, successful, happy. Imagine yourself overcoming challenges, achieving your goals, the more vividly you can imagine it, the more powerful this technique becomes. Your brain doesn't always know the difference between what you vividly imagine and what's real. So when you visualize success, you're actually training your brain for success. Your habits shape your life. They're the small actions you take every day, often without even thinking about it. If you want to change how you see yourself, you need to change your habits. Start by identifying habits that reinforce your old self-image. Maybe it's constantly checking social media and comparing yourself to others. Maybe it's staying up late and feeling tired all the time. Whatever these habits are, work on replacing them with new habits that support your new self-image. Remember, it takes time to form new habits. Be patient with yourself. Focus on progress, not perfection. Celebrate each day that you stick to your new habits, no matter how small they might seem. Your strengths. Too often, we focus on our weaknesses and ignore our strengths. But if you want to change how you see yourself, you need to recognize and appreciate your strengths. Take some time to identify your strengths. What are you naturally good at? What do people often compliment you on? What activities make you lose track of time because you enjoy them so much? These are clues to your strengths. Once you have identified your strengths, find ways to use them more often. When you're operating from your strengths, you feel more confident, more capable. You see yourself in a more positive light. We all have a story we tell ourselves about who we are. Maybe your story is that you're not good enough, or that you always fail, or that you don't deserve success. It's time to change that story. You are the author of your life story. You get to decide what it means. You get to choose how to interpret your experiences. Choose a story that empowers you. Choose a story that inspires you to become the best version of yourself. And remember, your story isn't finished. You're writing it every day with your thoughts, your words, your actions. Make it a story you're proud of. In today's world, it's easy to fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to others. Social media makes it seem like everyone else has it all figured out. But here's the truth you're seeing their highlight reel, not their behind the scenes. Stop comparing yourself to others. The only person you should compare yourself to is who you were yesterday. Are you growing? Are you learning? Are you becoming a better version of yourself? That's what matters. And remember, your journey is unique, your challenges, your triumphs, your growth, they're all part of your unique path. Embrace it. Own it. Be proud of it. You have so much more in you than you realize. Your potential is like an iceberg. What you see on the surface is just a small fraction of what lies beneath. You have talents you haven't discovered. Strengths you haven't tapped into. Ideas you haven't explored. Every great achievement in history started with someone recognizing their potential and acting on it. The Wright brothers didn't just wake up one day knowing how to build an airplane. They saw the potential in themselves to solve a problem that had puzzled humanity for centuries. You have that same potential within you, maybe not to build an airplane, but to do something equally amazing in your own way. The key is to start seeing that potential in yourself. Start believing in what you can become, not just what you are right now. But potential without action is like a car without fuel. It looks good, but it won't take you anywhere. You need to act on your potential. You need to push yourself, challenge yourself, stretch yourself. That's how you turn potential into reality. Remember, your potential isn't fixed. It's not something you're born with and stuck with. Your potential grows as you grow.
the more you learn, the more you try, the more you push yourself, the greater your potential becomes. So how do you tap into this potential? It starts with curiosity. Be curious about yourself. Ask questions like, what am I capable of? What would happen if I really pushed myself? What could I achieve if I didn't let fear hold me back? Then, Start experimenting. Try new things. Take on challenges. Step out of your comfort zone. Each time you do this, you're exploring your potential. You're expanding your sense of what's possible. Your mindset is like the operating system of your brain. It determines how you interpret and respond to everything that happens in your life. And here's the amazing thing. You can change your mindset. There are two main types of mindsets, fixed and growth. A fixed mindset believes that your qualities are carved in stone. You're either smart or you're not. You're either talented or you're not. And there's not much you can do to change it. A growth mindset. On the other hand, believes that your basic qualities can be developed through effort and learning. It sees challenges as opportunities to grow, setbacks as lessons to learn from, and effort as the path to mastery. If you want to change how you see yourself, you need to cultivate a growth mindset. Start seeing your abilities as things you can develop, not things you're born with. When you face a challenge, instead of thinking, I can't do this, think I can't do this yet, but I can learn. This shift in mindset can have a profound impact on how you see yourself. It opens up possibilities. It makes you more resilient in the face of setbacks. It encourages you to take on challenges and push yourself to grow. Your beliefs about yourself shape your reality. If you believe you're not good enough, you'll find evidence to support that belief. If you believe you're capable and worthy, you'll find evidence to support that too. The crazy thing is, often our beliefs about ourselves aren't even our own. They're beliefs we've picked up from others' parents, teachers, friends, society. It's time to examine those beliefs. Are they serving you? Are they helping you become the person you want to be? If not, it's time to change them. Changing your beliefs isn't easy, but it's possible. Start by challenging your negative beliefs. When you catch yourself thinking something negative about yourself, ask, is this really true? What evidence do I have for and against this belief? What would I say to a friend who had this belief about themselves? Then, start replacing those negative beliefs with positive, empowering ones. Instead of, I'm not good enough, try, I'm constantly growing and improving. Instead of, I always fail, try, every attempt teaches me something valuable. Remember, your beliefs are not facts, they're interpretations. And you have the power to change them. Your identity is who you believe yourself to be at your core. It's the labels you apply to yourself. I'm shy, I'm bad with money, I'm not creative. These identity statements can be incredibly limited. The truth is, your identity is not fixed. You can choose to change it. Instead of saying, I'm shy, try, I'm working on becoming more outgoing. Instead of, I'm bad with money, try, I'm learning to manage my finances better. This shift from fixed identity statements to growth-oriented statements can be incredibly powerful. It opens up possibilities for change and growth. It allows you to see yourself not as a fixed entity, but as a work in progress. Your values are your guiding principles. The things that matter most to you. When you live in alignment with your values, you feel fulfilled and authentic when you don't. You feel off balance and dissatisfied. Take some time to identify your core values. What matters most to you? Is it family? Creativity? Achievement? Honesty? Once you have identified your values, ask yourself, am I living in alignment with these values? Are my actions and decisions reflecting what's truly important to me? Living in alignment with your values not only makes you feel more fulfilled, it also shapes how you see yourself when you're true to your values. You see yourself as authentic and principled. You have a strong sense of who you are and what you stand for. Your self-image and your relationships. How you see yourself affects how you interact with others. And vice versa. If you see yourself as unworthy or inferior, you might accept poor treatment from others. If you see yourself as valuable and deserving of respect, you're more likely to cultivate healthy, positive relationships. 
Start paying attention to how your self-image influences your relationships. Do you speak up for yourself? Do you set healthy boundaries? Do you surround yourself with people who support and encourage you? Remember, you teach people how to treat you. When you value yourself, others are more likely to value you too. When you respect yourself, others are more likely to respect you too. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks. To keep going in the face of adversity. It's a crucial skill if you want to change how you see yourself. Because let's face it, change isn't always easy. You're going to face obstacles. You're going to have setbacks. The key is how you respond to them. Resilience isn't about avoiding difficulties. It's about facing them head on and coming out stronger on the other side. It's about seeing challenges as opportunities for growth rather than insurmountable obstacles. Building resilience starts with your mindset. See setbacks as temporary, not permanent. See them as specific to the situation, not a reflection of your overall worth. And most importantly, see them as challenges to overcome, not reasons to give up. Resilience also comes from self-care. Take care of your physical and mental health. Build a support network. Practice stress management techniques like meditation or deep breathing. The stronger and more balanced you are, the better equipped you'll be to handle life's challenges. Your inner critic. We all have one that voice in our head that points out our flaws, doubts our abilities, and holds us back from taking risks. If you want to change how you see yourself, you need to learn to manage your inner critic. Start by becoming aware of your inner critic. What does it say? When does it speak up? Once you're aware of it, you can start to challenge it. Is what it's saying really true? Is it helpful? If not, it's time to change the narrative. Replace your inner critic with an inner coach. Instead of berating yourself for mistakes, encourage yourself to learn from them. Instead of doubting your abilities, remind yourself of your past successes. Be your own biggest cheerleader. Your comfort zone again. But from a different angle, your comfort zone is familiar, it's safe, but it's also limiting. It keeps you stuck in old patterns, old ways of seeing yourself. Expanding your comfort zone is key to changing how you see yourself. Each time you do something that scares you a little, you prove to yourself that you're capable of more than you thought. You start to see yourself as brave, as someone who can handle challenges. But remember, it's not about taking huge leaps, it's about consistently taking small steps outside your comfort zone. Maybe it's striking up a conversation with a stranger. Maybe it's trying a new hobby. Maybe it's speaking up in a meeting, whatever it is. Do something every day that stretches you a little. Your goals again, but this time let's focus on the process. Not just the outcome. Often, we fixate on the end result losing weight getting a promotion, starting a business, but it's the process of working towards these goals that really changes how you see yourself. Set process goals alongside your outcome goals. Instead of just lose 20 pounds, add exercise for 30 minutes every day and eat five servings of vegetables daily, instead of just get a promotion. Add take on two new projects this quarter and ask for feedback from my manager monthly. These process goals do two things. First, they give you a sense of control. You can't always control the outcome but you can control your actions. Second, they help you build new habits and skills. As you consistently take these actions, you start to see yourself differently. You become the kind of person who exercises regularly, who takes initiative at work. The words you use both when talking to others and when talking to yourself shape your reality. They influence how you see yourself and how others see you. Start paying attention to your language. Do you use empowering words or limiting words? Do you say I can't or I haven't figured out how yet? Do you say I have to or I choose to? Make a conscious effort to use more empowering language. Instead of I'm so stupid, try I made a mistake. And I can learn from it. Instead of this, it's impossible to try this, is challenging. But I can figure it out. Remember, your words create your world. Choose them wisely. 
Your expectations have a powerful influence on your actions and your outcomes. If you expect to fail, you're more likely to give up at the first obstacle. If you expect to succeed, you're more likely to persist until you do. Start setting positive. Realistic expectations for yourself. Expect that you can learn and grow. Expect that you can overcome challenges. Expect that you have valuable contributions to make. In but remember, expectations aren't guarantees. They're not about predicting the future. They're about creating a mindset that supports your growth and success. What you focus on expands. If you focus on your failures and shortcomings, they'll seem to multiply. If you focus on your strengths and successes, you'll start to see more of them. This doesn't mean ignoring your weaknesses or pretending everything is perfect. It means choosing to focus on what empowers you. It means looking for opportunities instead of obstacles. Solutions instead of problems. Start each day by focusing on what you're grateful for. What you're excited about. What you're looking forward to achieving. This simple shift in focus can dramatically change how you see yourself and your life. Your standards are the levels of quality and achievement you demand from yourself. They reflect how you see yourself and what you believe you're capable of. Raise your standards. Expect more from yourself. Not in a harsh, critical way, but in a way that honors your potential. When you raise your standards, you rise to meet them. You start to see yourself as someone who is capable of excellence. Someone who doesn't settle for less than their best. But remember, high standards aren't about perfection. They're about consistent effort and continuous improvement. They're about striving to be a little better today than you were yesterday. How do you see your future? What kind of person do you want to become? What do you want to achieve? Your vision shapes your actions and your self-image. Take some time to create a clear, compelling vision for your life. See it in vivid detail. Feel the emotions associated with achieving it. Let this vision guide your decisions and actions. Remember, your vision isn't set in stone. It can evolve as you grow and change. The important thing is to have a direction. A sense of where you're heading. As we wrap up, remember this. Changing how you see yourself is a journey. Not a destination. It's not about becoming a completely different person overnight. It's about gradually expanding your self-image. Pushing the boundaries of what you believe is possible for you every day you have the opportunity to reinforce or challenge your self-image every thought every word every action is a vote for the person you want to become make those votes count you are not defined by your past you are not limited by your current circumstances you have the power to change how you see yourself and in doing so to change your life start today Choose one small way to expand your self-image. Take one action that aligns with the person you want to become. And then do it again tomorrow. And the next day. And the day after that. Remember, you are capable of so much more than you realize. You have strengths you haven't discovered. Potential you haven't tapped into. Greatness you haven't yet expressed. It's time to see yourself for who you truly are. A unique valuable capable individual with unlimited potential for growth and achievement it's time to change the way you see yourself because when you do you change everything